Good morning. I come greeting you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and just wanted to say today the scripture that I had is Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Each day, our minds need to be renewed. And the only way that we're going to be able to renew our minds is by the word of God. So I encourage you today to get into the word and study. The Bible said to study to show ourselves approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Also, uh, my other scriptures, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it also tells us to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So I ask, I encourage you today to trust in the Lord. Whatever you got on your plate, whatever you, circumstances you're facing, whatever you're going through, you can trust in God. Man might fail you, but God said you can trust, look upon him. He told us we can look to the hills for which come in our help because we know that our help comes from him. So look to him today with all your circumstances, all your problems. He promised us if we cast our cares upon him, he cares for us. God bless you. God is still alive. He has not forgotten his people. And he's still sitting on the throne. Takes all the guesswork out of it. It says here in Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So really there is nothing to fear if we got God in our lives. He already didn't tell us what to do. He, he already got us. He got our back. So all we got to do is trust and depend and lean and trust in his word. For he said, my word is truth and my word is life. At this time that we're in, at this hour that we are in, we got to remain faithful to Christ. Don't let, don't let nobody downplay your faith in Christ. Like the one with the issue of blood, you got to speak within yourself, knowing that Christ lived within you that you can do better in this time. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is a day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, here today, we'll be talking from the book of Ruth. And Ruth is one of the uh, great books. It just kind of it intrigued me, you know, whenever I began to look at it, how much compassion and how much love that was in action in this book. Sometimes we start out on our days and uh, it looks like we've got a plan, but sometimes the plan don't work as we plan, you know. So here uh, Ruth was one of the uh, two women that are written in the Bible that's got uh, books in the Bible. And uh, Ruth was not a Jewish woman. She is a Moabitish woman. And here in Ruth, uh, it's a good book to read starting in the first chapter. And I'm going to read a few of the words. It says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And it says, And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of the wife, Naomi, and the name of the two sons, Malon and Kilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And uh, what caught my eye was, is that they was already in Bethlehem. They was already in the land that God had promised them. And a lot of times, you know, the Jewish uh, race didn't have anything a whole lot to do with, with the other races. Uh, here we know that uh, they went into a land that was uh, like a, uh, 
it was it was a Gentile land. It was a land where the Gentiles were, and they really didn't have a whole lot of dealings with them. And they went, amen, into a country called Moab. And uh, there was a Moabite woman there by the name uh, of Ruth. And this is where the boys uh, picked up their wives at. Make Malone and Kilion picked up their wives in Moab. And first of all, sometimes things look good. Uh, you know, they was going somewhere where they knew that there was food. There was a famine in uh, Jerusalem. There was a famine in Bethlehem. Amen. And uh, they went down that way. First thing happened was Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died. And that would look like that would be the end. But then, uh, next of all, what happened was her sons died. And you know, the son is the one to carry on the bloodline. So here we know that Naomi thought that, you know, this would be the end. And sometimes we think that things could be the end and when it's really the beginning. And God had a plan. One thing about God, God always has a plan, you know, to work things out for our good. Amen. It would look like if you lose your husband or your wife or some of your siblings that uh, we want to question God, but there's no questioning God because he's always got a plan. All things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And God's got a purpose and a calling to us all. So, because a lot of, many are called, few chosen. Amen. A lot of things ain't passing, y'all. It shall come to pass. I know that true. Uh, that's true. Right, that's true. Right. It shall come to pass. But right now, you Talk gotta about it. ride the storm. Yeah. You, got a, you got a baby, you got a girl. unto him. Beloved, it is not the end. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Weather the storm. <laughs>